Today on Sugar Spoon Run, I'll be showing you how to make English muffins. Hey Sugar Spoon Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. These English muffins are surprisingly simple to make, and they are packed full of nooks and crannies. This dough is incredibly simple to make, especially when you consider the fact that it's a yeast-based dough. Despite that, everything comes together and you can have fresh English muffins on your breakfast table in under 60 minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to need one half cup each of whole milk and water. We're going to combine these and we're going to heat them in the microwave until you have a temperature between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. You do wanna use a thermometer to check the temperature. If your mixture is too hot, it can kill your yeast. And if it's too cool, your yeast is never going to foam properly. Always stir your mixture before taking the temperature as sometimes there are some hot pockets in there and you might not get an accurate reading if you don't. All right, we're in that temperature sweet spot, so let's go ahead and add this to a large mixing bowl. We'll also add two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. Now to help encourage the yeast to activate quickly, I'm going to add just a sprinkling of granulated sugar. This is about a teaspoon. We'll stir everything together until it's nicely combined. Now we'll just need to wait about five to 10 minutes until that mixture is nice and foamy. This is looking beautiful, so we can go ahead and add two tablespoons of granulated sugar, three fourths teaspoon of salt, I have three tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted, and I wanna get every bit of that butter in here. You're also going to need a large egg, and I like to use a fork to just lightly beat that, or I guess I beat it pretty well, actually, before I add it into the batter. And we'll also need two cups of all-purpose or bread flour. I'm just using all-purpose flour today. Now, once you've combined everything, you'll just wanna stir it together until the mixture is completely combined and smooth. All right, now you'll wanna cover this with plastic wrap or with a towel if you don't have any plastic wrap. And we're going to let it rise for about 30 minutes in a warm draft free place. Once your dough has doubled in size, you wanna go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll also wanna grab yourself a set of uh, English muffin rings if you are using them. They're not entirely necessary. You can make this without the rings. Your English muffins just won't have a nice round uniform shape. And to be honest, sometimes even using the ring, mine don't come out that perfectly, so you'll be okay. All right, grab yourself a medium sized pan and set it on your stovetop over medium heat. I'm using my cast iron pan today, but you could use stainless steel instead, that would be fine. Once that's nice and evenly warmed, we're going to add about a half tablespoon of butter. I'm just using unsalted butter here. And then I also like to use my English muffin rings or egg rings and let the sides of those warm up a little bit. These are non-stick. If you aren't using non-stick ones, you might wanna grease the insides so they don't stick. You also wanna prepare yourself a baking pan because these English muffins do need to be baked before they're ready to eat. So I just use a cookie sheet. I've lined this with parchment paper and I just dust the surface of it with about a tablespoon or maybe even two tablespoons of cornmeal. All right, now we're going to measure out about a third cup of our batter. Now, this is going to totally deflate and look a little crazy when you go to scoop that out. This is totally normal. It's like a really sticky, elastic pancake batter. Now, because I want these to be a little bit more round, I'm going to just use the back of a spoon to just kind of gently nudge that batter towards the edge of the rings. You don't wanna deflate the batter any more than you have to. This point right here is where you start to get those nooks and crannies. So if you're cooking this slow enough, those nooks and crannies are going to form. So it's important that you don't have your heat too high. All right, so after these have had a little bit of time to cook, we're going to remove the rings and they should hold their shape at this point. And we'll use a spatula to carefully flip the English muffins. This might be more of an example of what not to do. As you can see, only about half of my muffins cooked on each side. It looks like my pan's actually not heating evenly. So this is a good lesson to learn for the next two that I cook. Now, because the butter can start to burn and it can make your English muffins look really weird, I like to use a couple paper towels to wipe out the butter after I cook each round of muffins. And I'll repeat this with the remainder of my dough. Usually I get seven to eight English muffins out of a batch. Now, once I've cooked the outsides of all of my English muffins, I'm going to take these over to my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, where they're going to bake for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you've cooked these properly, they should only take about 10 minutes in the oven. The reason I like to cook them in the oven is because it's really hard to cook them all the way through if you're just using stovetop heat. The oven will finish them off, but when we cooked them on the stovetop, that's where we created those bubbles that are going to be our nooks and crannies. Now, the best way to test if your English muffins are done is to use a thermometer. This is an instant read thermometer, and I'm looking for a temperature of 205 degrees Fahrenheit. 
We are right on the money here, so I'm just going to let these cool and then we'll take a peek inside. Now, whenever you're cutting an English muffin, you never use a knife. You always want to use a fork. Now, we're just going to use that fork and kind of pierce the English muffin all the way around until you've gone all the way through. All right, I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'm a little bit nervous to see the nooks and crannies in here because these took me a little bit longer than 10 minutes to cook in the oven. Usually what that means is I didn't, I used too high of a heat on the stovetop and didn't let them cook long enough there. And that time on the stovetop is where those nooks and crannies really develop. So let's take a peek and see if we have any. Okay, we do. I would like to see a little bit more, but we've got nice nooks and crannies. They're perfect for catching all of that nice melty butter. And that is how you make perfect English muffins at home. Wasn't that easy? I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. And if you try this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs> this is so good.